get started. Okay, so we're looking at wills. We've had a look at the task sheet, so you can get. We'll talk about how that interacts with things. Right, a will is how a person sets out their property is to be disposed of when they pass away. And so they might have a house, they might have some money in the bank, they might have some superannuation that they've accumulated while they're working, they might have a collection of just a Bieber CDs, right? All those things are immensely valuable. And so it's just a way of saying, how do we distribute those when a person passes away? You can write your own will, there are will kits, and I'll try and remember to grab one of those next time I'm in a news agent, just for you guys to have a look at. And there's the public trustees provide a free will making service, but I believe there is some cost for that when you actually they actually act as the people who look after the administration of your estate when you pass away, and I think there's a cost involved in that. Okay, so that's why they do that. That's my understanding. Well, yeah, so some important things. Let's just talk generally about making a will. Um, and it's suggested that everyone over the age of 18 probably should have one. I suspect that many, many people don't. I know I haven't for a while, but I have had one made now. It must be made in writing and it must be signed by the person making the will. It also has to be witnessed by two witnesses and they generally they can't be beneficiaries. So they can't be someone I've named in the will that are going to benefit from it. Yeah, you might go to a you might go to a justice of the peace and ask them to witness it. You could ask anyway. You could you could bring it up to school and I could ask two teachers here. I went into my solicitor's office, and the solicitor who had drawn up the will, um, and one of the office staff came out was a second witness. So there's nothing too important or special about it. But yeah, you, you just have to find two people who aren't going to benefit from the will to uh, to witness the signing. So here are the four conditions, and and you can think about this straight away in the example of. The seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's going to the RSPCA and the dog. Okay, you could say, well, these are the conditions that have to be met around this situation. It must be in writing. It has to be signed by the person making the will. It must be witnessed by two people, and it must be made freely and without influence. And that's an interesting element. That's the one that's perhaps most easily challenged because all the other ones are black and white. A will is either in writing or it isn't in writing. There's no way around it must be signed by the person making the will. Uh, there is an exception to that we will talk about where it's where a person has clearly been contemplating the will but hasn't got to the point of signing it. Um, but this last one, is it made freely and without influence? Okay, and that's something you could delve into. So you could look at those as a checklist for this will that you're thinking about. To make a will, you must be at least 18 years of age unless you're married and under the age of 18. Right, a little interesting thing. You can get married with permissions under the age of 18, and so you can make a will. And you must have capacity to make a will. Remember we've talked about capacity, for example, in contracts and entering into marriage. This is another example of that. You, you must have the capacity to be understanding what's going on, because that can, that can be a problem later in life when people maybe are struggling with uh, illness, dementia, something like that. It becomes a lot of questions whether that's whether a document's been made with full capacity or not. So that again could be something you look at with relation to the article. The Succession Act 1981. Now this is a piece of legislation, it's obviously a Queensland piece of legislation, that reverts around what wills are. And it says that people are expected to, should, provide for their family, including through a deceased person's property. Now this is the, like the controversial element of wills. And this is something that surprises me. I sort of feel that if you know, Tom wants to write a will and if Tom wants to leave his money to like some obscure llama farm in, in North Queensland and to some bloke he met on the bus and had a chat with the other day but's never met before, I sort of feel like it's Tom's money and Tom should be able to do that, assuming that he has capacity and so on. But they're saying no. If Tom's got you know a couple of kids and a wife... They're saying that regardless of what Tom wants to do, he has responsibilities to that wife. Yeah, Lara. If you have a prenuptial agreement yep. with the person that you're marrying, yep. are they automatically not allowed to give you anything in the will to receive anything? No, I, I think that a will would be different. So prenuptial is um, a binding financial agreement. Yeah, so different from divorce. But of course, one of the things around wills, it's a good point, one of the things around wills is of course what happens when you divorce someone. Right, and that's really important that people think about that and, and changing their will at that stage. Josie. Yeah, what if you have hardcore hate your wife? What if you what? Like, don't like your wife. You don't you, want to be 
Yeah, yeah. And then then you got to think about with your will. But then of course people would say you have a duty. You do have a duty. This this act is saying you've got a duty to care for. If someone's in the position of being your wife, you've got a duty. Yeah. What about, Chelsea. You know how you kids leave you? Like kids leave. Them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's something that's argued a lot. You know, if one person, let's say one sibling has been the primary carer for someone for eight, ten years as they've struggled with health issues and someone hasn't been on the scene, then um, they, might, uh, they might make that argument uh, about that. But, and, and you would hope that the, the, the will would reflect, would reflect um, the, the efforts that that person's made. But, yeah, and that, that often happens, Josie. One thing that often gets challenged there is distribution of the house. Because if someone's been living there, if the if the child has been living there as a carer for a long period of time, they lose not only do they lose the, the parent they've been caring for, they might lose the house if that's sold up as part of the will, and they might argue that they have some entitlement to that. Okay, so a will can be challenged in court, and this is what we're getting to in the assignment. Right, we don't give you a lot of details; it's only an article, but it can be. Even if it contains specific instructions not to give money to Josie, we can challenge it in court. Right, people can say, yeah, that's that's not reasonable on the basis that adequate provision has not been made for their support. It can also be challenged if the person doesn't have mental capacity. This happens often because if a will's changed sort of at the last moment late in life, perhaps the most famous example of this was Lang Hancock's will um, made in favour of, um, and some changes there that was on the TV series late in life. It can also be challenged if it doesn't fit within the rules. For example, it hasn't been signed by to, it hasn't been witnessed, it hasn't been witnessed properly, it hasn't been signed, and so on. Yeah.